Okay, wow. Oh, I've forgotten to turn. I've forgotten to turn the little thing on. It helps if I turn that on. Or else I'll be really, really static. And wouldn't that be terrible? It would, it would. It would be absolutely awful. Um, start. There we go. That'll help. That's part of the way there. How are you doing anyway? Today, we're going to be playing a little bit more of this dungeon. Oh, yes, we are. There we go. That's better. Um, I've been thinking about changing my mic for this. Because at the moment, I've got a big old mic. But um, life might be easier if I had just used a lapel mic. So I do have one laying around. Um, I'm just not sure whether or not it sounds any good. Um, because I got rid of it because it didn't sound very good. Or at least it didn't on Discord. So, hmm, maybe we'll have a little try with that. Um, anyway. So we're going back into this here dungeon, looking for the um, looking for the magic amulet of the vampire lord. Right <clears throat> now, we lost the last party. Um, the dwarf went off and um, decided that he was going to live out his days drunk, and he sold this map <clears throat> as is to this group of adventurers. Now, first thing you're going to notice is that this is not Shadow Dark. No. You might be shocked to find that I've decided to just go to OSE slash BX and play that instead, use that instead. Um, for obvious reasons. I just think it's uh, more, more, more what I'm used to, right? I'll keep on... I will at some point come to kind of tie the uh, try and tie some of the cool tables that it's got into other stuff. But I actually think that you know, moving forward, once we clear this dungeon, because um, if we remember, it's got some. I'll just count them now. This is done like seven rooms, and it's got forty-two-ish rooms in it. Right. Um, <clears throat> so. We'll clear this dungeon, see how we find it. But really, I want my next... I'm going to spend a lot of uh, uh, attention on Pendragon, but that'll be more kind of actual solo roleplay as opposed to this, which is a far more procedural crawl through a dungeon. Um, so anyway, this is my kind of... Steady with that, this is my standard kind of sheet. I've got the combat tables here, obviously. Um... Now that I'm looking at this, I'm just double checking that I uh, actually updated them all. Um, I think I did. I think these are all correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like it, looks like it, looks like it. <laughs> yeah. So you'll see I've got the hit dice table um, for the character. Uh, I just note what weapons they're using. Ow, my arm hurts. Right, so... I got a little tracker for torches and then some basic information about the characters. Um, so we've got Burim, the thief, uh, Chotan, the magic user, Spurious, the fighter, uh, Atia, the fighter, um, Nim, the elf, Isla, the elf, uh, Novol Novelier, the dwarf, um, Ralph, the thief, Adela, the cleric, and Albold the cleric. Um, <clears throat> so that's cool. I've let my magic user have a sling because I'm a generous god. Um, a generous slime I am. I am a generous slime indeed. This gives us a total of 10 characters. Um, let's just quickly do a combat order. So... Um, We'll have one out in front. Um, so that's a thief. He'll be kind of like 10, 20 foot ahead of the rest of the group. Um, then we'll have probably two of the fighters. So we'll have Spurious. So we'll have number three and number four because they're both fighters. Um then we'll have, um, where are my other fighters? Uh, 
clerics, thief, dwarf, elf, elf. Oh, I only had two fighters. Okay. Um, on here I've got down, but the, they got spears. But really, I shouldn't have spears. We should all just have halberds as our um, secondaries, except for these two. We'll have pole hammers as a secondary weapon um, so they can attack from the second rank. Um, spear, that's fine. With two elves, we've got sh they're in wizard mode, so we shouldn't know what spells we've got. So this one's got a sleep. Um, intelligence 13. Uh, everyone gets read magic because I give that away for free. Um, and a bonus spell. I can't. I can never think of anything other than the main two spells. But this person will have sleep, armed. Um, Attila. Atia is a fighter. Isla is a thingy. Is an elf. So. Charm person. Normally I'd roll, but life is hard enough as it is. And Chotan, you will have um, sleep. Right. Um, and that kind of covers, covers the spells. Um, cleric, first of all, don't have any spells. So that's, that's them. Um, is that right? That's about a 10. You're a thief, so your hit points definitely aren't 10. And your constitution is only 12, so your hit points are 4. Let's see, we'll be finding little errors like this all day, but such is life. It'll be fine. <clears throat> all right, let's finish off his battle order. Um, so we'll have two clerics behind. No, uh, will we? Actually... So four won't be there. One, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. So one, we'll have. Where's that dwarf gone? Seven. Right. Three and seven. Um, four. Then we'll have one of these clerics. Nine. Oh, which one's got about yet yeah, nine? Then we'll have the magic user um, two. Then we'll have um, the two elves, right? So we'll have the two elves. That's five and six. Five, six. We'll have the other cleric ten, and then we'll have the other thief. Hanging back. So this is for whenever we're in um, corridors and that kind of thing. That'll be the, 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 the standard configuration of the team. Until my, f my first fighter gets immediately stabbed and I have to move everything around. The other thing I've got, of course, is um, the uh, to hit tables for monsters. Um, so, yeah. Ooh. Chamomile tea, because it's almost bedtime. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to look at this map and think, um, where should we go? Uh, where's this party going to think about going? So if you remember the, um, the stairs are here, the leaders in. We've got this locked door which has been a bane in everyone's side. This door's broken open. Or at least it was last time we were here. And then we can either go this way or we can go back over this way. Now, they didn't know there was a clue there. So that seems like it's probably a sensible place for us to go. So I think um, if we do... Uh, Probably a one or, a, well, how about we do this? Um, 
If we roll high, we're going to go this way. And it's advantage. So, yes. Okay, we're going to go this way. Back to wherever his clue is. Um, <laughs> this is something to bear in mind. Uh, we'll probably still continue to use the standard um, shadow dark resolution for going around. Um, it's fine for now. I think maybe making like a slightly simpler version of the mythic um, table, except for as opposed to using D100s, just using D20s, but we'll see. Um. Mm -hmm. well, the thing about that is that the mythic table kind of has um, three dimensions, right? It's got the uh, chaos factor, which shifts you left and right along the axes and then it, oh it's two dimensional yeah it's three dimensional right is it it's two dimensional so you can you can shift left and right based on the chaos factor and then you can shift up and down based on the likeliness um so clearly it's two dimensional i'm an idiot um but anyway let's go so every two moves is going to be a Ran and wandering monster roll, and let's see where we get to. So, um, one, two, three, four, five. Is this store still not there? Let's, um, let's see. Yep, it's still not here. 17 and a low, and, um, yeah, and it's you know it's it's completely if the door frame has been removed. Clearly, it's it's going to be it's going to be worked on at some point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is one turn. Um, <laughs> the problem is whenever I put a dice here, I always end up moving the bugger. Right. And we're using um, the magic user will be in the middle, right? So his light will go, yeah. Um, the thieves are kind of using their their are not using torches because you know they want to get a bit of an advance warning on anything turning up. So um, the magic user has got a uh, chotan has got. A torch so let's just mark that they've used a torch um and probably someone closer to the back will use a torch two or five. Oh, two two is at the back already so mm. probably four will have a torch out as well there we go so they'll both have a torch out um for now uh actually no maybe Move that out. Maybe three has a torch out. So there we go. Um, <clears throat> so we're here. This door. Um, <clears throat> let's roll to see what the door state is. Four. It's stuck. So. Um, so. Uh, Spurious will try and push it open. So on a five or a six, it comes open fine. On anything else, it comes open bad. Six, it comes open fine. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There. Yeah. And four means random encounter roll. On a one. There's a random encounter. Five. Also, we should probably go on to the um, the random generator and go for hallway to see if anything new has happened in this corridor. So let's see. 16. Secret. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. So that, that'll be, we'll leave blank. Okay, so we're here. Um, one, two, 
three, four, five. This door. How are we feeling today, door? One. Easy open. We'll listen at the door first, though. We don't hear anything. Um, has this room repopulated since we were last in here? So let's well see what's in here. Three. No encounter. So this room's still empty, right? So one, two, three, four, five. How's this door looking? Five. Stuck. Um, again, we'll push it. It makes noise and it sacrifices our turn. So three. And we'll roll from a random encounter. On a one or two, there'll be a random encounter because of that loud noise. There's no random encounter. Um, next turn. One, two, three. This door. How are you feeling, door? You're feeling stuck. Try and push for it. Um, we don't manage to push for it in a smooth one. So it's a two and a one or a two for a random encounter. Three. No random encounter. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, I should have rolled. Should have rolled on this um, thingy chart for hallway encounter. Any hallway encounter? Eight. No, nothing. Um, and the previous hallway, 11. Would have been a trap. Did we detect the trap? Um, <clears throat> Thief out front, dexterity is 13. 12, we detect the trap. Um, so we detect the trap and go around the trap, that's fine. <clears throat> Wonder who set these traps? Probably the Vampire Lord. Um, let's ask, um, did the Vampire Lord have these traps set up? 10, that's a twist, right? I think so. Um, that's annoying. Uh, one thing that I'll actually have to open up a Shadow Dark book for. Hmm. Search. Shadow. Dark. Mm -hmm. Is it in here? I think it's in here, is it? I can't remember. Level advancement, casting spells, scrolls and nonsense. <sighs> What's this? Gameplay. Onwards, rolling dice. Um. <laughs> it might just be in a solo dark book. <sighs> Back to here. Clear it. Solo Dark. Um. <laughs> Where are you? Mm. Okay, here it is. Uh, no, no. Yes, here it is. Ten twist. Um, something unexpected happens. Page eleven. Prompts for a twist. Okay. Let's roll a D100 for the verb. Number three. Trust. 47. Trust fought. Ah, well, clearly what happens here is... Um, um, Burim is, 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 is... Here's in his mind... Um, uh, Come, come, Burim, to the, the third floor. There are great wonders here, and I will give it all to you. And um, it says he's lawful, but he's a thief, so he's not. He'll be neutral. Um, and Burim is like, aha, I, I'm being, uh, I, I, will, I will go and, and, and find this place. So um, let's just make a quick note. Um, Burim... Uh, 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 hearing voices, right? Okay, cool. Um, 
here, um, that takes us down to one, so we need to have a little rest. And we need to light more torches. So torches, torches, rest, takes us back around to turn six. Um, and let's go. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Brings us here. Um, takes us to five. Um, and then roll for corridor encounters again. <laughs> Nineteen. Roll twice. Eleven. Trap. Fourteen. Obstacle. Okay. Well, let's check out obstacles. Most of the obstacles are kind of rubbish. Obstacles, 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 obstacles. 17. Um, pool or river? <laughs> pool or river? Well, I don't think... Hmm... Mm, how about what's this? Du, 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 du. Pool or river? What might there be? Um, they can't be can't be too deep. Well, see this part you won't know. So hold on, there's a pool here. Pool. Um. I guess uh well we'll try and see how 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 deep the pool is with with a with a uh, rod right we'll we'll, we'll use a a, a a a ten foot pole and see if um see how deep it goes right um let's see how deep it is um uh is the pool is the pool um deeper than 10 foot um yes one and yes and uh, the swirling currents pull away the, the pole and we are down and we are, we've lost our pole um lost uh, ten foot pole. Now, uh, given lots of us in plate armor, we're not going to go. We're not going to go through this pole, pool, because that's that's a death sentence. Um, so we're going to have to find another way around. By the looks of it, um, which is a bit annoying. Uh, so we're going to come down. So that's going to waste us a turn. Four, and we're going to have to roll for a random encounter. Four, no random encounter. But we're going to come back down to this door. So this door is um, still locked, right? Uh, so let's see if we can unlock it. 17. Nope. The first thief doesn't manage to unlock it. Second thief will come and give it a go. So Ralph will come and give it a go. And does unlock it, right? I'm using a roll under for for skill, straight skill checks here. <coughs> okay, so we opened this door. Interesting. What's behind this door? Let's roll and find out. Um, here we go. Thirteen. Oh. Dead end chamber. Okay. Dead end chamber. <laughs> Five. Oh, that's no encounter. That's annoying. Okay. 
Um, this room's empty. After all that, it's a dead end and it's empty. Okay. Well, with that, I suppose we'll head back here uh, to this junction and see what's down. Or this junction and see what's up here. Um, one to three, four to six, right? One to three, yeah. So we'll come down along here and have a look. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, roll for encounter. Ah. It's gone. It's gone. It rolled off the table. Come back to me. Come now. There we go. Um, five. We're good. Nothing. Nothing to see here. Okay. Where are we? Um, one. We need to rest. So that's that. And we need to use some more torches. Um, and take us back up to six. Okay. Uh, and there's this trap. One, two, three. Um, does he spot the trap? He does spot the trap. Okay. We're good. He's good. Don't step on that stone, he goes. Now, do we go this way or this way? So one, two, three, four to six. Four to six. We're going to keep on going straight down. Um... <clears throat> Four. What is a four? Uh, back to life. Back to reality. Back to the here and now. Four. Okay, <laughs> re-roll, but have fret. Fifteen. Straight hall with obstacle. Okay. Um... So this straight, so it's got a straight hole, and we'll roll for listening in our thief. Thief hears whatever it is that's coming. Now, how far away is whatever it is? 60 foot, so we can imagine at the end of this here corridor, there is a group, and what? Pray tell is this group. I should probably have um I should probably have word open with my little random monster table. And a roll of a D twelve. Free. Cultists. Okay. Um three D six cultists. Twelve cultists are coming up this corridor. Um, what is their reaction like? Four, they will be hostile when they see us. Um, but we can lay an ambush because we have heard from ahead of time. And they've got torches as well, right? Because they're cultists, right? Um, <clears throat> so, um, there, we, we probably, um, prep up just around this here corner and they come up this corridor and um <clears throat> don't really have any figures but we can imagine right uh as they come through come come alongside this we leap and and attack ha ha um i'll count down a turn um and the combat starts and we get a surprise attack um Let's see, matey number one will be, number one and number eight will be trying to hide in the shadows. Um, I think that's a percentage chance in um thingy, but let's just, uh, let's just let them do a roll, right? So, um, neither of them successfully hide in shadows. Oh wait, no, one of them got a five. So one of them, one of them, when pink, that'll be number one, is hidden in shadows. The other one um, is just bumbling about and uh, not, not very well hidden at all in shadows. So they'll just be not spotted with the rest of the attack. Um, so three, seven, four, and nine all get an attack on these cultists. 
um, because they are cultists. They're one hit dice dudes with poison daggers, right? One hit dice with poison. Poison daggers. Um, oh, yeah, 12 cultists, right? 12 cultists. <clears throat> so our band bravely leaps out of the corridor at them and psh, does some stabbing. Um, I need some deep. Uh, let's have. Um, let's have. Uh, do I have just like a quick dice roller? Uh, dice roller. What? Why was it talking to me? Dice roller. <laughs> I want to roll um, 8d8. Roll. What are you doing? Stop. Okay, so... Um, no, I actually wanted to roll 12d8, didn't I? 12. Roll. Okay, so we've got... Eight hit points, a seven hit points, a five, a seven, a three, an eight, a seven, a one, a one, a one, a one, and a five. Okay. So, I will take them kind of like in order, right? So... Armor class, they're just in robes, so they've, they've got an armor class of nine. So for um, three, three to hit needs a nine or above. <clears throat> Best, probably better way to put it here. And as always, as we like to start with these ambushes, we have missed horribly. Um, he just, uh, pff, pff, just <laughs> with his sword and, and, uh, hits the floor, because he's an idiot. Seven is the um, dwarf um, who hits. So he has an axe, and he'll be attacking number two. Um, he has plus three to his damage, and it's going to be a 2d6 pick for highest. So six plus three, that's nine. So this second one is cleaved a, t a twain, cut in two by this massive war axe. Um, it's what we like to see. It's what we like to see. Um, so that's those two. They've gone um, four. That's a hit. Um, well, they've got the hall bard, so that's a... Heavy weapon, so it's a six again. Um, do they have a bonus to strength? They do plus one, so that's seven. Um, probably hitting the first one, so that's down to one hit point. Um, next is nine. Pole hammer, okay. It's a miss. Um, okay, then two is Chotan, so they've got a sling. An 11, that's a hit with a sling. So that does D4 damage. <coughs> three points of damage. Um, three points of damage, probably shooting at the, probably shooting at this front one as well, right? Yeah, if you imagine that was like a, probably a block of four of them have come into interview. Um, so that was. Number two, number five has for short bow and misses. Um, number six has a short bow and misses. Ten is a cleric and will have a sling and misses. And eight is faffing about. Eight, eight is in the melee, right? Eight also misses, and then um, one is attacking from the darkness and misses. So, all in all, a truly terrible first round. So, second round. Um, cultists go first. So, they're a bit surprised, but they've only lost their front two members. Um, they've seen the two thieves, so we can imagine... 
probably the thieves are kind of like a, a, a front of the, if you imagine, a front of the, the corridor and the rest are kind of attacking and were planning on coming around the side, but have more kind of like just got stuck in this corridor. Um, so they can probably have two people attacking kind of one-on-one -on -one here and then again probably two people attacking one-on-one -on -one with these thieves and the rest of them are kind of a little bit out of sorts at the moment um <clears throat> so and they could technically throw their daggers so but we'll so enraged combat is first right so I guess we'll throw, we'll throw the, the ones at the back will throw their daggers. So, um, this is where this table will come into play. So, they are hit dice one, attacking us. And if we go around, if we go over who is on who? So, this one will be on, um, if we give these uh, one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Um, so if we just say like a one is on one, um, two is on eight, uh, three is on three, and four is on seven, and then one and two, what, these two will throw a dagger at one. Uh, these two will throw a dagger at three. And this one will throw a dagger at eight. So let's roll these here. Let's roll these here bones, right? So this one is going to fire at one. One has got an armor class of six. That means they need to roll a 13 to hit. Yeah, miss. Right. Um, the next one is going to roll, was going to throw the same one, so 13 again, misses. Next one was going to throw at number um, three, very much misses. Um, next one was going to throw at um, nine, misses. Last one, misses. Okay, right, melee. Um, this guy was attacking one, hits, um, so he does d4 damage to number one, and number one has to make a saving throw. So that's a one, so that's not going to kill him from that, so three, but um, he needs to make a poison saving throw. He doesn't make a poison saving throw, so he is paralyzed. crumples to the ground um so that was that melee this one is going to attack seven um number two is attacking number eight that's another hit so again four points of damage on number eight that's dead um, saving throw, didn't make a saving throw either, so he would be paralyzed. That's both of the thieves gone. Um, and then, um, next will be number three on number three. Fifteen, number three's armor class is two. Um, that's definitely not going to hit. Yeah, it hasn't hit. Okay, good. Next one, three, but it hasn't hit. And the last one, 11, doesn't hit. Okay. So we've lost both of the thieves. I mean, one of them's paralyzed and one of them's dead. So. <clears throat> Great. For two, um, number three and number um, seven. They're going to seven. Yeah, the dwarf. Seven, nine, plus three. Does a nine hit? Seven. Yeah. So that hits. 
Um, he does five plus three, eight points of damage. Two for one attacking him, um, which is number four. So one, two, three, four. This one is dead. Good. Um, next is Frey Spurious. Um, Spurious misses because Spurious is useless. Um, next is uh, the two polearm users. I think they both have, so we've got four and nine. Nine has a nine, four has a nine, so we can just roll them both at the same time. They both hit, so that's a six on <clears throat> let's take off a six. We'll take this one down to one. And the other character hit for a five. Um, we'll probably take out this one. Um, <clears throat> and then the slingers. Oh, I should have rolled the range attacks first, shouldn't I? Can't sh Yeah, okay, cool, whatever. Um, sling. It's a miss. Um, nine, two, five. Two, five. Nim. It's a hit. D6 damage. Four. Kill one of these. Um, next is number six. So it's short way again. Eleven. That's a hit. So D6 damage. Four. We'll say this one. Um, okay. That's a, a start. This would be have been a better first round, I suppose. Um, and then eight is dead. Okay. Um, next round of combat. Um, bad guys go first. They roll their initiative. They roll their thingy. Morale. So that's a fail. So they run away. In their turn. Probably to go and get some help. These guys are probably cultists of a vampire. Um, okay, well, after one very unsuccessful combat, we'll I'm gonna wrap up my evening there and probably come back to this tomorrow. Or oh, actually, given it's Friday, I might start Pendragon tomorrow. So we'll see. Have a great time, human beings. Um, I will put you. Well, I mean, I'm saying this, but this is probably going to be midway through a video because I'm probably going to add another video on for the end of this. But yeah, talk later. Bye.